recommendation regarding this SDG was on encouraging governments to utilize artificial intelligence to analyze legal documents and translate vital information into local languages. And this empowers marginalized communities and ensures equal access to justice, ultimately advancing uh, human rights in Africa. Secondly, leverage artificial intelligence to analyze vast amount of data to identify early warning signs of conflicts and governments and NGOs, CSOs can collaborate to develop preventing, preventive measures and promote peace building initiatives. Third one is encouraging the use of artificial intelligence as preventive tool for conflict sensitivity and the detection of hate speech on digital platforms on social media. Also, initiating the development of peace building mobile application designed to operate without internet access and available in local languages for rural communities to empower them with essential peace building tools and resources, even in areas with limited connectivity. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, so just for the sake of, let's clap for it. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we have to be out of this room at 1 p.m. And we also understand that we'd like to have an interactive session and give our young people in the room and the audience to speak. But thank you very much. And allow me to also correct that while saying so, because the question and answer session is going to come in the interactive session with young people. And what um, Amel was sharing with us were the key messages for the preparatory of the 2024 ECOSAC Youth Forum, what came out of it, and uh, the Africa Session Continental Youth Consultation on the SDGs too. So thank you for giving us that summary, Amel, and we do hope that even up to this, you can engage with your fellow peers and share more on this. Now, moving on to our next speaker for today, and he's gonna be joining us online with a key message for the African youth. Mr. Sadio Mane, thank you for having us, uh, for joining us and for joining us virtually just to check if you're, if you're online and we'll give you that opportunity and the floor to speak. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Sadio, just, just one minute, as you seem to be muted, if you can please um, unmute for, so we can, uh, from our end, just give us one moment. And, uh, yes. Do you hear me now? Thank you. All right. Great. Great. So, next, excellence, Madam Christina. Excellency, Madam Christina Duarte, Undersecretary of the United Nations and Special Advisor on Africa and distinguished ministers of regional and international organizations, distinguished ambassadors, permanent representatives to the United Nations. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to take this opportunity to applaud the UN Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, for having convened the Youth Forum of the UN ECOSAC for 2024 as well as the Office of the Special Advisor for the, of the United Nations for Africa for having organized the Africa uh, Youth Forum of uh, the ECOSOC. I also wish to particularly thank Madam Jennifer Tobatan, Charge uh, uh, responsible for economic affairs at the United Nations, for the invitation for me to take the floor during the Africa session for 2024 of the a youth form of ECOSOC. Artificial intelligence for accelerating the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals in Africa is a matter that is very pressing, as we are all aware. Uh, structural transformations of Africa are currently underway for the achievement of sustainable development and for the attainment of a lasting peace as part of the nexus between peace, security, and development. With more than 200 million residents uh, aged 15 to 24, Africa is comprised of the largest uh, youth population in the world. Uh, and this is projected to be the case in 2050. The African population is expected to reach 2.5 billion. And this clearly points to a significant uptick of internal uh, challenges related to sufficient food, drinking water, 
uh, sanitation, as well as social services. There are issues related to growing demands of a job for jobs, and this also presents emerging opportunities, opportunities such as progress in terms of science and technology and innovation, including technologies related to artificial intelligence. In order to harness AI for the advancement of sustainable development, there is an imperative to place a strong emphasis on high quality education, on uh, affordable, accessible, high quality education with a strong emphasis on STEM, science, technology, innovation. And we have been alarmed in observing that 44% of the 240 million people who are not attending schools live in Africa and 90% of those who can go to school lack access to the internet. These are figures which are unacceptable for artificial intelligence to have a meaningful impact on sustainable development and a lasting peace in Africa. A critical mass of the population needs to have opportunities to learn how to both use and deploy AI in a safe and secure way in a way that does not violate their safety and which is not used for malicious purposes with sustainable development and lasting peace in Africa being achieved. In this regard, I'm pleased to announce the completion and the, uh, of, of the construction of a primary school which I helped to build in Senegal to address sustainable development related challenges for the United Nations in seeking uh, to achieve high quality education in Africa and the world. Nelson Mandela has stated that education is the most powerful weapon that one can use to change the world. To achieve sustainable development and lasting peace thanks to AI, we have a duty to establish a framework to invest in high quality education as well as in digital infrastructure. to encourage discipline through sport, I recently inaugurated a football stadium. A football academy in uh, Senegal is currently uh, being uh, put together, and we have uh, undertaken efforts to encourage pro uh, professionalism and uh, a team spirit in young people. I am very heartened by the implementation of the free trade zone, the continent-wide African free trade zone. We have an opportunity to capitalize on development initiatives already underway in Africa, such as the continental African free trade zone. And this will increase intra-African trade by 40% and a $450 billion increase with uh, reaching um, many people and helping to extricate many from poverty. This is the largest free trade zone in the world with 1.3 billion consumers. I wish to stress the critical importance of a healthy population to achieve sustainable development in Africa. Our health systems need to be positioned to support these transformations. Africa is far from being on the right path in the achievement. We are on the right path to achieve sustainable development. The Africa which we want, as summarized in the Agenda 2063 of the African Union, Indeed, the world is far from having, uh, from being very close to achievement of the SDGs, and all countries in the world have nonetheless assumed a commitment to this agenda. There is a concept paper where the sustainable development goals are related to health and welfare, and we see that they are far from having been achieved in Africa. The recommendation, the landmark recommendation of the World Health Organization, uh, twenty uh, is is of uh, a concern. Only two countries in the continent have complied with this. Millions of people need basic health services. 
technological innovations related to artificial intelligence, re have uh, reducing waiting times, reducing travel costs, and accelerating uh, treatment options, particularly for people in remote areas, potentially can save many lives. The uh, the budget goal of 15% of our national, of national budget dedicated to the health sector has not been achieved. This is crucial when it comes to improving Africa's health system, crucial to avoid the worst. We are living in difficult times. COVID-19 has made uh, the situation difficult for medical staff. Uh, undermining uh, the African health systems, showing that they are def that they have significant shortcomings, and uh, showing that human and financial resources are limited, and economic weaknesses in African economies are significant. COVID nineteen resulted in the fact that, that Ebola has already been identified. There is a lack of adequate investment in health care in Africa when it comes to preparations. COVID-19 once again revealed Africa's vulnerabilities because African countries have not yet uh, successfully established the framework for a robust, strong, prosperous Africa. This is the global vision of the Africa which we want. COVID-19 has claimed millions of lives, undermined uh, livelihoods for millions, and plunged people into poverty. It has slowed down the economic poverty to, to a pace of less than 2.6% in 2021. Many businesses collapsed as a result. And the pandemic has slowed the growth of the African economy. It has given rise to heightened crime and thwarted hard-won gains in Africa. The this has be a health catastrophe became an economic catastrophe, a catastrophe for health and security is a catastrophe for humanity. And this shows that Africa needs to be prepared for the next pandemic. We can not achieve this unless we pool our efforts. COVID-19 has also revealed pharmaceutical dependence on pharmaceuticals in Africa. Only 1% of, uh, of medicines are manufactured in Africa. Approximately 94% of medicines are imported in Africa, and essential medical products are imported in Africa from outside the continent. And this has further weakened our health system, leaving us in the mercy of disruptions in supply chain, which have been provoked by traditional wars and other factors. We are all aware that uh, of the figures in the concept note about how AI can generate a development in Africa. AI technologies by 2030 can jumpstart the global economy $15 billion, $700 million to the tune of that amount. That is 14%. Uh, Africa will have $1.3 billion of that share for Africa. And uh, when we consider the share of Africa up until now, that figure is significant. This represents one-third of Africa's GDP, which was $3.1 billion in 2023. Let us take this opportunity. Let us adopt a common commitment and that we cannot accept those figures because they are unacceptable. We have an opportunity to make Africa a healthy place, and a, uh, we will build a uh, uh, the heritage of a prosperous, healthy Africa for succeeding generations. I sincerely hope that today we will mm, reach recommendations 
and political decisions on how we can all support the reversal of the slow trend to help facilitate sustainable development in Africa. I'm not asking what Africa can offer me. I ask myself rather, what can I do for my Africa? Let us strive to do the same, all of us. Let us, all of us, what can we do to achieve the Africa which we want as is stipulated in Agenda 2030 for sustainable development and as is set out in the Sustainable Development Goals and as enshrined in the African Agenda 2063, I wish to conclude with a statement calling for uh, the weapons in Africa, uh, for the uh, energies to be focused on sustainable peace and sustainable development in Africa, and I wish to thank you for your kind attention. Well, thank you, Sadio, for... My pleasure. I missed on the joke. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you, Sadio, for joining us online and you know, the wor your words of inspiration to the youth of Africa, highlighting the importance of Agenda 2063 of the Africa that we want and the Sustainable Development Goals and the role and the work that you're doing in Senegal. Congratulations in terms of the school that you've built in Senegal which is really important when we talk about transforming education in Africa and all of us playing our part. But also allow me to acknowledge the President of the United Nations Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC President, Her Excellency, Ms. Paula Navias, who's just joined us with us, joined us here and is with us in these discussions with the African youth. So thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Sure. Okay, so we will move on to hear from Ms. Alice Mukashaika, who is the co-founder of Starlight, a Rwandan egg tech social enterprise, and also a member of the African Union Youth Reference Committee. Over to you. Thank you, moderator, um, your excellencies. Um, so delighted to speak filled with hope and optimism for the future of Africa, particularly speaking on youth entrepreneurship, a topic that is really close to my heart because I'm an entrepreneur, but also the transformative power of artificial intelligence. It's another topic I'm currently interested in exploring because it's truly uh, changing uh, the business as usual. It is a pivotal moment at, at this time for Africa because it is uh, the youngest, it has the youngest population in history and uh, the numbers are going to increase uh, even. And uh, it's projected that 50% of young people will call Africa home by 2100. And this represents a huge opportunity for Africa. And I was raised in Rwanda and I was uh, growing up, I've really seen um, how the power of young people could play in changing the nation and we are the catalyst for progress and it's time to harness that potential. In our journey towards sustainable development, we encounter challenges and opportunity as entrepreneurs. We've um, limited access to funding, infrastructure that often hinder aspirations as, as young entrepreneurs across the continent. But yet, within these challenges lies the vast opportunities for growth and impact. And speaking on AI, it's really growing on the continent, as the previous speakers highlighted. And um, the entrepreneurship ecosystem, there are so many AI-focused startups, startups tackling, um, tackling a wide range of challenges across the continent from fintech to um, agriculture to healthcare, and it really shows the power of AI um, in changing um, lives and communities uh, in Africa for better. However, this journey toward leveraging AI for sustainable development requires a collective effort, and uh, the next generation of 
African entrepreneurs need to be equipped with necessary skills, resources, and support system uh, that really help them uh, to thrive. And these include in investment in STEM education, access to AI tools and technologies. I co-founded Starlight a few years ago, and the goal was to really boost um, interest of girls in STEM, and we usually make STEM learning kits and introduce um, girls to uh, resources and offer uh, them tools they need to perform and, be, and become ch change makers in the space because STEM is the future and AI is where the world is heading to. I will leave you with these three comments as we progress in this, in this fantastic conversation. Number one, we must ensure that AI, um, AI driven initiatives are developed and deployed ethically and inclusively. We can't really afford leaving anyone behind. Number two, we need to address concerns such as bias, private privacy and transparency because we can build trust and confidence in AI technologies and ensure the benefits are accessible to all segments of society. And lastly, we cannot do this alone. We need collaboration and partnerships because government, private sector, academia, civil society really need to come together to create this enabling environment for AI-driven entrepreneurship uh, to thrive because we are all learning. It's a new concept and we really getting um, so many things in the process. So together, let's really embrace this spirit of innovation and build a great future for Africa we want. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Alice. Uh, very inspirational. And before we move to the interactive session, I would just like to acknowledge the incredible diversity of perspectives and experiences that we have in this room. And I believe that each of you brings unique insights, you bring unique ideas, and you're welcome to share them freely as we're yet to learn from one another, we're yet to challenge our assumptions, we're yet to co-create solutions that can transform lives and communities across Africa. Now having said that, we don't have much time left, we're just 15 minutes left. Unfortunately, we're just going to have to take the maximum of three interventions from the room and with the limited time of one minute maximum per person, just to give you an opportunity to also respond and you know, uh, give us your perspective to the conversations we've been having. So now allow me to start from the beginning, uh, I mean from the, from the front, rather from the beginning, from the front, um, and I'll give the floor to the Minister of Youth for Nigeria, if you can please intervene. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, for the sake of time, permit me to proceed on already established protocol while I acknowledge the presence of the President of UN ECOSOC. Well, Nigeria earnestly calls for global and regional solidarity. Nigeria earnestly calls for global and regional solidarity in accelerating and eradicating poverty in Africa, especially among young people through information and technology transfer. Well, because we cannot achieve all of this without quality representation of young people at decision-making tables, the government of Nigeria recognizes this and that young people need to be adequately represented across all levels and types of decision-making processes. So the government has recently approved a 30% minimum of youth inclusion quota with an equitable young women inclusion in governance at all levels of government. In order to ensure effective implementation of this policy, we plan to incentivize the sub-national governments who adopt this youth inclusion policy of government with more funding and support for young youth empowerment programs and for young entrepreneurs for young entrepreneurs as well, through initiatives such as the 110 million US dollar youth investment fund in, uh, intervention and um, to, be, to be implemented through the presidential initiative for youth enterprise clusters. And efforts are in place to back this policy statement with an act of parliament to ensure sustainability through institutionalization, just like we did with the Not Too Young to Wrong bill uh, in Nigeria. The Youth Development Bank also stands to improve access to finance to young entrepreneurs and create decent jobs and make young people creators of decent jobs beyond being um, 
job seekers as well. And a recently passed bill to establish the Student Loan Fund, which caters to bridging funding gaps to access to quality education. And as well, the, the Youth Development Bank also seeks to bridge the gap uh, with a focus on high-risk youth who fall under the informal sector. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister, for your intervention. And also just to take this moment to appreciate all our ministers that represent us in Africa for their presence. I see the Minister of Cabo Verde, who's in the room. I see the Minister from Ghana, who's in the room, and all other ministers that are here with us in this session. Now, we'll take two more questions. And with these two more questions, I see there are a lot of hands up, which means we need to have a follow-up discussion on this because it's quite interactive. And I'm sorry that we only have to, we can only take two questions. Now, allow me to take the question from the gentleman on my left, if you may start off with introducing yourself. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Olasukbo Abidin is my name, and I am from Nigeria. And um, I will start by saying congratulations to every young person who are able to make it here. And um, while we are talking about issue of entrepreneurship, as Ms. Christina talked about, we have the Africa Free Continental Trade Agreement. It is disappointing that to trade with a person from South Africa, as in Nigeria, I need to obtain visa. The issue of taxation is there. The issue of restriction of movement is there. So if we are talking about entrepreneurship, I think policies like the Africa Free Continental Trade Agreement should be a conversation that will be at the front burner for us to ease issues with entrepreneurship. And on the issue of artificial intelligence, like the United Nations has the resolution on AI, I think this is the right time for us to start talking about the African Union resolution on artificial intelligence as well. Can we start having like, you know, ethical use of AI and framework so that issues around, you, you know, deep fake, issues around abuse of artificial intelligence will be something that will, will be copped. I'm also happy to inform us this morning that as a Nigerian, we have developed an AI solution to combat misinformation, disinformation, and violent extremism. The AI platform is myaifachaka.org, and it has been translated to local language like Swahili, French, and Arabic. This is to ensure localization as well, and to ensure that no one is left behind as far as conversation around artificial intelligence is concerned. I think we can take it off from here by ensuring that we have AI framework, and also ensuring that the AFCA, FTA that we have currently is something that is really useful for the African youth. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much for your wonderful contributions. So I'll take one more question. Let me just look around the room. I think I've gone to the left, uh, and we've had wonderful interventions for two lovely um, citizens of Nigeria. And we'll move ahead to the right, and I'll hear from the gentleman on my right. Good evening, everyone. I'm Srijan from Bangladesh, and I am the founder of the Social Impact Lab. I'm just coming here fr from attending the uh, Asia-Pacific Regional Talk, and something I find in common, and I feel like everybody can agree, that to uh, proceed with our 2030 uh, agenda, we need an army of change makers in all the countries, and regardless of every country giving their best effort to create that army, what I believe is that we need to start at university levels as well. And universities can play as a major catalyst to partner up with the students to help them create more social impact projects, which is something I'm trying to do at my university. Through the Social Impact Lab, we have now created a framework to drive 16,000 students in Bangladesh to help them create their social impact projects, and I urge uh, other countries to urge their universities to come into this game and help contribute actively. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we're out of time, so we cannot take more questions. Sorry about that. But perhaps we'll continue this discussion under a series, um, you know, virtually too. So I'll take this moment to hand over to Ms. Janaiba. Jobeth to, okay, so, uh, okay, so I'll take this opportunity to give it to Mr. Claude. Mr. Claude, the Executive Secretary of the National Youth Council of the Democratic Republic of Congo, and my apologies, as I believe you're supposed to speak within the session of our youth, 
but I guess we can say we saved the best for last. So thank you very much for your patience. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. First and foremost, I'd like to thank the UNDP and the UN, the UNDP, UNICEF, all of the partners, the Office for Youth, and I want to thank everyone. I come from the DRC, which is a country in the heart of Africa. We have more than 80 million hectares of arable land. We have many hectares of dense forest. And we have a large number of bodies of water, too. These forests are crucial when we're talking about global warming. And here, DRC is one of the countries that represents the solutions. My country faces many injustices. We face a war in the east of the DRC where over 10 million have died, the majority of which are young people. We cannot achieve objective 16, SDG number 16, if we don't have serious cooperation, if we don't have diplomacy. I've, we need to achieve the agenda of the Africa that we want. Young people are catalysts for change because with the National Youth Council, we've put in place several measures in order to push the government, to push our leaders to listen to young people and to allow young people to implement projects to affect change for our people and for Africa. We've put in place an intergenerational dialogue with young defenders of the Charter. The aim of this was to create a framework for cooperation of our country's institutions with young people. And today, these young people are speaking. These young people need space to achieve the 2030 agenda. There's the issue of artificial intelligence. It is truly in vogue today. But let me shock you with something. Artificial intelligence acts according to the desires of people. The artificial intelligence doesn't act on its own. If our leaders and others, if they have bad intentions, then artificial intention will be used to destroy Africa. And today, we need to recall, we need to remind young people that artificial intelligence represents an opportunity to be used properly to build an Africa for peace, a sustainable Africa, a Africa of milk and honey where everyone lives well. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, thank you for your intervention. And we're so, so sorry that we, we're out of time. We've run out of time. And, uh, you know, we just thank Miss Christina Duet for, you know, uh, joining us for the rest of the session. And she has to get ready for another session. So in this regard, we have to move to the closing of the session. And we can say after the official closing, we we'll remain you. and we give an opportunity to Janaiba to also then give a summary just to allow her to speak. And uh, from yeah. there, we no, proceed. No need for summary. We wouldn't. Um, thank you very much, Madam Duarte, for making this happen. And thank you for all the colleagues, and especially the, the, we are our speakers who have left everything in their busy schedules to be here. The summary will be available on the UN OSA website. The key messages will be available on UN OSA website. So right now, I would like to give this, um, the floor to uh, the president of the ECOSEC. Ma'am, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mrs. Cristina Duarte, United Nations Under Secretary General and Special Advisor on Africa, Excellencies, Youth Delegates, Youth Leaders, Ladies and Gentlemen. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to join you and share some thoughts about the important role that youth have in harnessing the potential of artificial intelligence I thank the organizers for the kind invitations to be here today. 
Data about the African continent is quite revealing. 60% of Africa's population is under 25 years old. This defines Africa as the youngest continent in the world. Africa's youth represents one of its most important resources toward achieving sustainable development. With the African population expected to reach 2.5 billion in 2050, artificial intelligence could present significant opportunities to meet the demands of a booming population and be transformative catalyst for Africa's development. This frontier technology may also offer one of the most critical tools to optimize the impact of energy production, agriculture, and land use. It could transform education and healthcare, as well as build the necessary resilience to tackle the dev devastating impacts of climate change. Africa is rich in natural and energy resources, human capital, innovation, and creativity in designing solutions to local problems. Some of the richest agricultural lands in the world belong to Africa. However, the benefits of these abundant resources are yet to reach the majority of its population. There is a need to explore the re responsible use of AI in Africa for inclusive sustainable development, including actionable and forward-looking policy recommendations, ensuring youth empowerment and gender equality at their core. Since the creation of AI, we have encountered concerns about algorithmic bias, particularly regarding race, gender, and ethnicity. These concerns stem from use like facial recognition, inaccuracies, biased medical information, perpetuating stereotypes, and more. The underrepresentation of Africa in AI development creates a vicious cycle of information bias. Global AI models rely heavily on the data they are training on, and with limited African data, these models lack the context to understand the continent's unique experiences. This point underscores the critical need to bridge the digital divide and ensure equitable participation in STEM fields. This will be crucial for developing AI that is truly representative. Beyond these biases, gender bias also represents a significant concern. AI has the potential to be a powerful tool for closing the gender gap, not widening it. To achieve this, it is crucial for women to be actively involved in the development of AI. Their participation can help reduce gender bias and ensure AI reflects the needs of all genders. Furthermore, AI offers exciting opportunities within the care economy, a sector often undervalued globally. In Africa, for example, caregiving work has long been unrecognized and the burden disproportionately falls on women. All driven so AI-driven solutions can alleviate this burden by providing support, resources, and assistance to caregivers. These solutions can also offer safety tools promoting a more secure care environment. The AI Advisory Group of the United Nations recognize concerns beyond misuse of technology they highlight the potential drawbacks of misuses, failing to take advantage of and share the benefits of AI technology out of an excess of cash. Research suggests AI has significant economy potential. By 2030, it could contribute up to 15.7 million globally, with Africa alone seeing a potential 1.2 trillion boost, representing a 5.6% increase in its GDP by the same year. Recognizing the rapid spread of new and emerging technologies and their immense potential to advance the SDG, as well as associated risk, I have proposed for the Council to hold a special meeting on harnessing artificial intelligence for the Sustainable Development Goals, 
on the afternoon of 7 of May in New York. The meeting will feature two panels. The first on governance, exploring the importance of ethical, transparent, and inclusive AI governance frameworks. Additionally, it will delve into regularity and policy considerations to ensure responsible AI development. The second panel will showcase how AI has been used to accelerate the UN Sustainable Development Goals. By showcasing successful application of AI and fostering discussions on responsible development, this meeting aims to empower stakeholders to leverage AI as a powerful tool for tackling global challenges and building a more sustainable and inclusive future. We particularly hope to have voices from Africa join us as their experience are substantial to this conversation. We also look to facilitate knowledge sharing, collaboration and partnerships among all stakeholders, a purpose of substantial importance since we fail to involve all parties. We will fail to harness the opportunity for AI. I look forward in the to, to your engagement in this special meeting and we look also the potential that together we can leverage AI to the benefit of humankind and achievement of the SDGs. And I thank you. Thank you very much to the President of ECOSOC for joining us in our Africa session. Thank you to the UN Special Advisor for Africa, Ms. Christina Dewitt, for making this happen for young people and always making sure that you take time to engage and to have young people's voices included in decision making. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the young people that were on the panel, those that joined us here physically, and our Africa Bright Stars that joined us virtually. But most importantly, the people we've had in the audience being able to interact and for us to find solutions for the Africa that we want. Thank you once again. Thank you, Janaiba, as well for your contributions and making this happen for young people across the continent. And this concludes the end of our session. <laughs> thank you. 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 Thank you.